there guys so really exciting day finally came um back in november i think of last year i placed an order for a bunch of fruit trees and some more fruit bushes for our property to kind of boost that um aspect of our um production here and we only have like blackberries a fig tree we have three blueberry bushes and an apricot tree but i got a bunch more and i ordered them from this place called trees of antiquity um they specialize in heirloom varieties specifically of apple trees but other trees as well and so i placed a large order and the way they did it is when you place your order you pay half up front and then half when they ship so i paid half and then just recently i paid half because the uh, trees themselves were on their way and so today they have arrived so I'm gonna open this box up and show you all what I got okay guys so here is the box that all these trees and berries came in so it's not a very big box it's like um, 12 inches by maybe six feet this way and then I will go through all the things that they crammed in that box so this is another reason why I love buying bare root is less packaging i mean there are so many benefits to buying bare root and that's just one so i'll show you everything that i ordered and then we will okay. so i have ra latham raspberries here and it was 25 dollars for five so you get a bunch of five and you know you buy them in a bundle i got flame grapes these are like the table grapes um that you can buy in the grocery store. And it's a bundle of three, I think again for $25. I got, actually I got a free tree. I guess I ordered so, so many trees, they threw in a free tree. And I don't know where I'm gonna put this one, but it's a Wixen apple and I'm really excited. It's organic. I'm really excited to look up the variety and see what's, what's up with it. Um, I need to now, I think, decide where I'm going to put it. <laughs> but yay! Free's always good. And this is a pink umi apricot. So you can see, like, this tree is, like, five feet tall. And this tree is also five feet tall. And you can see that both of these actually have side shoots already. So they're, like, pretty far along. And I'll go through the instructions that are included after this, but that's like really good to getting you off on a like strong footing with planting these in the ground. I got two hazelnuts and you have to buy two so that you get the fruit, um, the nut, you know, and these are just, you know, smaller or skinnier whips. Um, you can see there's not much root development. I'm not worried about it. It'll be fine. They'll spend the first year on the ground growing their roots anyway. So, um, again, though, the tree itself is like six feet tall. It just doesn't have any side shoots. I got a pomegranate, the Parfianca pomegranate. This doesn't look like it was actually bare root. I don't know if that's like, it looks like it was in a root trainer, actually. I think. I'm not sure. Um... But it's going to go in a container. And I mean, honestly, the roots just look really good and healthy. So I'm happy about that regardless. This one is smaller. Um, it's probably two and a half feet. Um, and then I got a Weeping Santa Rosa Plum. This one is like big. Like I'm, you can see how thick it is. I'm really excited about this. Again, this one is probably five feet six between five and six feet and again you can see those side shoots and then I got a persimmon which is a looks like it's a younger whip as well with no side shoots um my etta hazelnut which is my other hazelnut so that I can get the flowering and fruit and then I got a cherry tree right here so all of these how many plants is this this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven trees, three grapes, and five raspberries, all bare root in one package, 
and I paid around $300 for all of them. And I'm really happy with the quality actually because you can see so many have these side shoots. Okay, so now that I've unboxed the trees and the berries and the grapes, I need to soak their roots for about 30 minutes to one hour so that they can just rehydrate and kind of get out of their slumber um, from being shipped. They looked, all the roots looked really good and some of them definitely don't look dried out, but just soaking them for a little bit of time is only gonna help. Um, and then I'm going to go around the property and prep the holes that I'm going to be planting them in, decide, I guess, where I'm going to be planting them. I had a rough idea of where I was going to be putting each of these, uh, plants, but now it's time to really decide. And then I will get them in the ground and show you where they ended up, I guess. Okay, guys. Whew, it's hot out here. It's crazy. It's... Just the beginning of March, but I'm sweating my butt off planting out here. Uh, all the trees and the berries and the grapes that I bought and the hazelnuts are all in the ground. I'm going to take you around and show you um, where I planted them, just so you all know. But first, I just wanted to say that the company that shipped, um, shipped me the fruits and everything gave a sheet of instructions that is like super in-depth which i love and they have more instructions on their website so it's trees of antiquity that's where i bought from and i'll show you the sheet so they have a sheet that is for berries grapes and kiwis and then they have like tree planting directions and i know like basically anywhere you get these kind of berries um bear root i've ordered from several different places and they all kind of send instructions but these are by far like the best every sentence is like loaded with information and it's like front and back you can see it's front and back like single spaced and it's very valuable so just highlights when planting a grafted tree um you always want to plant at least two inches like you want the soil to be at least two inches below the graft point you also want the graft point pointing north. This is especially important in warmer climates like mine uh, because you don't want it to burn. Um, I think, I don't know, I've kind of been on the fence about painting the trunks. Um, it It is warm here. I mean, it gets up to 100 and like I did plant all the trees in full sun. So I'm going to be continuing to think about that. I probably have to do a little bit more research. I've kind of heard some people really recommend it some people say mm, not such a big deal and this sheet of instructions recommends to do it in warmer climates where it can get sunburn i feel like my climate is kind of on the cusp of that but i do have like interior white latex paint um just in the house and they say to just dilute it 25 percent with water and you know i did just spend quite a bit of money on these trees i do want them to live and thrive so it probably is worth just going ahead and painting those trunks another thing is not to amend the soil like the planting whole soil i think it used to be i don't know i'm not that old so i don't know about used to be in the gardening world but i have heard that it used to be common advice to always amend heavily in a planting hole and planting a tree like lots of fertilizer things like that just to give it the quote unquote best life but now the common wisdom is to actually let it acclimate the roots to your native soil more quickly and prevent what this sheet calls the clay pot um, situation where basically you have a hole that is really nice, perfect soil, but all around that is native soil. And so the roots can end up circling in the ground. Um, I did that. We do have clay soil here. You know, it's rich though. I have amended the whole, our whole property with inches of wood chips in the fall so when i was digging the holes i could see like the line where the clay was but you know it was pretty fur there were earthworms in it i'm not worried about it being like devoid of nutrients i kind of feel like clay soil gets a bad rap like oh if you have clay it's automatically bad and if you're amending with you know wood chips compost um things like that and you see soil life like it'll be okay. You know, it's not the end of the world to have clay soil. Um, so I did all of that stuff and I actually have seen on these instructions to, um, do some 
pruning. Um, first year pruning, you know, when you get them. It says here, it says here, cut back to about three feet above the ground for trees with a trunk at half inch diameter, four feet for five eighths diameter, and five feet for three quarters inch diameter. I feel like they already did that. I'm gonna go around and double check just to make sure. Um, and what I also did was I kind of made a mound above the like soil surface because we do get a lot of rainfall. We get on average, I think 60 inches of rain a year. I think that's more on the higher side. And so they recommend to um, kind of put a little mound and you can put your compost in the mound, you know, above. You don't want to cover too much of the trunk, but kind of to ensure drainage away from the crown so that you don't get root rot which I think that's a really wise thing to do. So I went ahead and did that. Um, what else does it say here? It says, yeah, so I'm gonna make sure to cut the height back based on the um, caliper of the trunks. And I have to choose my side branches as well. So all of my trees are gonna be pruned to like eight feet um, with an open, um, an open shape. Um, I think it's also called a goblet shape or whatever, um, to like facilitate airflow and stuff. Um, the only ones that won't be pruned that way are the three I have at the border with our property. They're all going to be fan trained because I don't want fruit hang, you know, falling in our neighbor's yard and branches hanging over the neighbor's driveway because that's not nice. So let me take you around and show you where I planted the trees and then we will look at doing some pruning. All right, so I'm in the backyard. Um, this is where we have our grapes. So I have one grape there, one grape there, and one grape there. And I'm actually going to get some like cedar furring strips and use some of this um, leftover utility wire we have to make little like trellises because eventually we're going to replace this chain link fence and you can see there's a bunch of crap on that chain link fence. Uh, a lot of it is trumpet creeper so that's cool um, that I need to still get down <sighs> for this year. But anyways, basically these are going to be trellised not to the chain link fence, but to a trellis in front of it. It also looks neater. So um, the grapes, they said not to prune until this main hen is the height I want it to be. And I think I want it to be pretty, pretty tall. So I'm not going to prune these at all, but here they are right here. And then the Latham raspberries, I have one, two... And then, can you see the third one? Three and four. And I have the fifth one actually on the, um, in the path to the backyard because I didn't have room back here for it. So um, I just threw it up there. It'll be fine. Um, the raspberries, they say to, when you plant, put the soil up like an inch higher than where the roots are. So I went ahead and did that. And they actually say to prune the, this back to a few inches, they say, because all the growth is gonna come out right of the base. So this right now is about, I have my pruning shears. And this right now is probably a solid foot. And I think I'll just prune it back to, well, what, four inches? And I'm always just going to make sure to prune right above where a bud is going to be. You never know. And here we go. So, done. And I'll just, I guess I'll prune all these back to about four inches. Raspberries are like super easy. You know, they grow like weeds. So I'm not really going to worry about being exact with them see if there's a there's not even a 
little swollen butt on this. So this is just getting pruned back. That's about six inches actually. One, two, three, eh, one, two, three, four. Let's do it a little shorter. You really want the growth to go into the roots um, this first year. Also, all the raspberries I got were primo cane. So that means that they are all going to fruit the first year. And that's really awesome. Just a nice bonus. One, two, three, four. I'm just estimating. Again, I'm not worried about it. I feel like a lot of people get really worried about pruning and blah, blah, blah. The important thing is to do it the first couple years. Um, if you don't do it, then your plant just isn't going to thrive. You know, it's not going to have the energy to develop those roots and it's not going to be good. So these are the blackberries that I actually had in my front yard last year. And these I didn't get, um, in this time, these are just being transplanted. So the way these fruit is you have the main header here and then you see like there's a ton of growth all over here. Those are all going to be branches. Um, first year branches. So I think, I think this fruits on second year growth. And last year was just like a year of growing this main stalk, this main, whatever cane. And then this is going to be pruned up, you know, this is going to be trellised up here. And then we're going to have the side shoots coming out just like all the others. This one is a black diamond. And then this is wild treasure blackberry. The growth habit is different. You can see um, these actually, I just have like side shoots and um, I pruned each of these back in the fall, back to like a height that I wanted. And um, you can see the buds swelling on these too and they will fruit as well um so that's those now let's go in the front yard and i will prune that last raspberry oh before i do that let me show you the hazelnuts and the other fruit tree so anyways oh let me grab my hori hori knife so that i can measure the caliper on these trees and prune them prune the height accordingly So this is my persimmon tree. So this is, since the blossoms are orange and the fruit is orange, this whole bed is going to be like blue, orange, purple, yellow colors. Um, so I put it in here. You can see the graft is pointing north. That's north for us. Um, and how tall is this? Probably, <laughs> One, two, it's probably three feet. It, I mean, yeah, I think they did trim it back. It's three feet and mm, about a quarter inch. So they said not to prune the height unless the caliper was at least half an inch. So I'm not going to prune that height at all. These are our two hazelnuts. So these are just going to be nice and bushy. Um, they're right here on the other side of our herbal and medicinal beds right there and right there and again you need two to end up getting the nuts so this is about four feet yeah i'm five feet four yeah this is four feet and yeah, again they're thin yep so i don't need to prune these so that's good Let's now let's go into the front yard and I will show you the fruit trees that most definitely will need some pruning. All right, so this is our weeping plum. And this is, again, about four feet. And it said to prune it if it was, and it's definitely about half an inch. 
So half an inch it said to go back to three feet, five eighths. Let me see, let me clean this off. One, two. Mm. Yes, it's half an inch. So I'm actually gonna prune this height back a little bit. Um, probably just, let me see, for my height, five, four, this is probably three feet. Um, so let me prune this back. Okay, you can say, see I pruned the top back and they also say to select a few strong branches and then cut those back to three or four buds and then prune off all the rest. So let me take a quick look. I do want this in more of a tree form. So, and I think you should pick like five to six is ideal. And again, with that more open shape, you want the airflow. So how many are on here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I think I'm going to go ahead and prune off these lowers. And you're supposed to prune like right above that crown. Okay. These two are spaced well. And also having them spaced about six inches is just generally a good rule. One, two, three, four... I'm going to cut this one off. So that means that I have one, two, three, four. This is four inches, but that's okay. Four, five, six, seven. Hmm. I'm just going to leave that, I think, for now. I might end up pruning one more off. And then it says to trim those back to a few buds. Two, three, four. All right, so this is what it looks like. We'll see if I did a good job. Again, I just don't sweat it. Um, it'll grow back, worst case. So let's look at these other trees. The last three trees I have, I planted here. This is our free tree. It's the, I think it's called the Wickton apple. This is our cherry tree. And this is our apricot. So, first we're going to measure the width to see if we need to prune the height. Let me... That's only like a quarter, so I'm just going to let it grow. But I am fan training this. And you can see that, first of all, you'll note that the graft uh, is facing north again. But I want these branches to only be side to side. You can see that there are a few um, that are the wrong way for me. So I'm going to prune those off. And that's good for now. That leaves three. And then in the coming years, they'll grow more shoots and then you eventually want to keep five or six like I said so that's good here is our cherry and that looks just fine there are no branches on it yet side shoots so we're just gonna leave it and then this is our apricot 
Again, I have the graft facing north and I think I can finagle this to be fan trained like this. Like these two shoots will be the side, but then this one is coming off the back. So, while it is a nice goblet shape that has been pruned, I, it is not in the direction I want. So the important thing is to just be ruthless with your pruning when it's early on. Um, and also let me measure the height. Yep, that's half an inch and four feet. All right, I'm gonna need my bigger pruners to do that branch. So I'll prune it and then get back. All right, so you can see that I pruned this one off so that we have a nice fan shape starting here. And these two have been pruned back to just about three to four buds. So this is gonna hopefully grow nice and strong this year. All right, y'all, thank you again for joining me. The only thing left to do with these fruit trees is to water them in really thoroughly. With the berries and grapes, I will not be watering them again until they leaf out. And I think the fruit trees too, but I'm gonna spend the afternoon taking notes off of the sheets that they gave me. I put all these reminders in my phone for all the different things to do at different times of the year. So I'm gonna be making sure that I am planning to take care of these trees and the fruits and the um, hazelnut bushes the best that I can. And hopefully this spring we'll see some good leaves, you know, come on and some strong growth. So thanks for joining me today and, you know, coming along as I put all these fruit trees in the ground and, you know, adding some diversity and some beauty and some more food. So thanks and I'll see you next time. Bye guys.